What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and I'm finally back with another devlog video for New Dragon Slayer which is my 2D turn-based JRPG. I know, I said it once and I'm gonna say it a million times, JRPG means Japanese role-playing game but I'm not Japanese. The game has a Japanese spirit, it plays like a Japanese role-playing game and looks like one. I'm just calling it a JRPG because, you know, I've, I'm so influenced by Japanese storytelling. Anyway, in the last video of New Dragon Slayer I actually showed you the tile set that I made and I made a few areas from it. After that I did code the uh, dialogue system in Unity and I did do a few more things with the uh, leveling system. However I decided that I'm gonna be moving the project from Unity to Unreal and I started from scratch believe it or not. So in this video I'm gonna be comparing everything I did in Unity compared to what I did in Unreal. So for now what I remade from the original version, the uh, area transitions with the fade screen, the levels, character movement and everything like that. You know it was very easy for me remaking all of this by myself in Unreal. I had to follow one tutorial for the area transitions but other than that, it was actually very easy and you know, doing it in Unity actually helped me learn the method to make it in Unreal. So what I'm trying to say is that the course that I took for Unity in making an RPG is actually quite useful, even if I'm not actually gonna use the code in Unity. So I learned the actual methods, but not the actual code, which I, I know it sounds crazy but it's actually very very useful. So yeah this is what I'm gonna be showing you in today's update. If you guys are gonna enjoy it please make sure to leave a like so that you could support this game's development. Check out my Patreon for uh, you know exclusive and early sneak peeks and sketches and stuff like that. I'm also planning to make a demo for Patreon so it should be out sometime this month. It's gonna be a very basic demo so don't expect anything crazy but yeah for this month I'm actually planning to do a lot of updates so guys check out my Patreon and like the video if you just want to support and you can support Patreon or if you don't want to you know likes are more than enough so please feel free to leave one and yeah let us get started with the update. Alright so the first thing we are gonna take a look at is actually the character movement. So the character movement I'm gonna show you how it was done in Unity then I'm gonna show you how I did it in Unreal. First if we select the player character in the hierarchy you can see that we have the character over here and he is his own prefab. If we go to the animator we can see the actual way that it is coded. So we have the player idle it is in an animation tree if you open it you can see that we have all of the animations over here and there is this condition over here if the position is minus one or plus one for the down and up or minus one or plus one for the left and right the way that it is set is based on the last move we also have another one for the player movement so this is for the moving animation and over here it's for the actual movement and not the last movement so that one is set based on which direction you moved last and i think it's much better handled over here in unity and much simpler than it is in unreal engine so basically we have it in our character script if he walks around we move him up more than zero that way the animations change and it sets also the last move when you stop so that's how it is done in unity now let us go to unreal and let me show you how i did it there so over here in unreal we have our character blueprint and i started from the 2d side scroller character template so if we open up our character i actually disconnected everything in the event graph that is related to animation and I'm definitely gonna delete it so yeah I'm not gonna do that now but I'm definitely gonna delete it later because all of this stuff is actually useless for me especially due to the fact that my game is not actually a side scroller but it is actually a top-down RPG during the event tick so every tick we are gonna set the movement flipbook 
and this is basically a function that I made so if you go to the function over here you can see that oh my god it's much more complicated and unreal but it's still fairly simple this is basic stuff if you go out and take a look at the player blueprints folder you can see the movement directions if you open it up I made an enum for every direction for movement and over here in the function we have a branch if the player is moving up or right we are gonna set this and basically it also connects to the false so if it's false we are gonna set the flipbook for the idle and if it's true we are gonna set the flipbook for the movement so yeah that's how it is and basically it's selected based on the velocity so if there is any movement then we are gonna play one of the walking animations over here we also check so this is the set and we check all of them this is basically setting the enums for this one kind of complicated definitely harder than the unity part yeah that was much harder to make but what was actually easier was the area transitions and I'm not gonna talk about them right now, I wanna show you the basic movement first and we are gonna compare it to the way it looks in Unity. It almost looks the same, so let us take a look and see the difference. So we are gonna press play and if you take a look, you can see the character can walk around and the um, tile set also looks okay. There are these glitches and I didn't try to fix them, but yeah, you can see that there is kind of some screen tearing and that can be easily fixed. So we are gonna fix that later, but you can see that everything looks okay and the character movement looks fine. Now let us go and test out the actual area transitions. So if you go there and hit the end of the area, you can see that it takes you to the next one and the next one I didn't work on it at all but yeah you can see that the area transitions actually work and the positions work so yeah that's just great it does need some polishing I still didn't make a variable for you know to stop the character from moving but that can be done very very easily so we are gonna take a look at the area transition let us open up the area transition blueprint and you can see that we have this area exit thingy and this one we don't actually need it so I'm just gonna delete it yeah like this we only have this area exit box to begin overlap so when you touch it we create the fade screen widget which is a black widget that's just you know a black screen we have this animation in the widget which is fade basically it fades out and it fades in we fade when we add the widget to the viewport we delay two seconds and then we cast to the game instance we set the area transition name and we open the level and the level is also based on an enum for the list of levels or you can just make a literal name and it would be the same now the rest of it is actually continued in the level blueprint so if you open up the level blueprint when you begin play we are gonna fade in so we play the fade animation in reverse and we also get the actor transform and each entrance has its own player start now i didn't need a tutorial for the first half of this but i actually used a tutorial to actually set where the player spawns when they return or when they you know at each entrance in the next level so basically if there wasn't a player start over here for when you come back it would be trouble because you know the player would just start at the start of this area so we want it to be like connected and that was what I had to look up because I had trouble with this anyway let me actually change the camera and zoom it out from the player so we can actually compare it with unity and if you press play now it should be farther yeah it is farther I still didn't work properly on the tile set I just made this very quickly or not the tile set, the tile map. I made this very quickly so that I can show you the level and you know, I can show you the game in Unreal running. So it almost looks the same, honestly, and it's fine. I just wanna get rid of the screen tearing and everything will be okay. And you know, you can use post processing to make things look different. Now, also in the next video, I'm gonna have to work on the camera system. So I want it to be like a Metroidvania camera so that we cannot actually walk 
outside or the camera does not follow you know when it reaches the end of this part it actually stops so that's very important and i really have to work on that urgently it was actually there in the unity version so if we go to unity and try to play it we can see that it looks almost the same over here the player is actually faster and the camera is farther but other than that you know the tell set looks the same it's also getting some screen tearing in unity i'm not sure why but yeah also if you press on this character you can see that we have the dialogue system in action and i'm not looking forward to remaking this part because it was kind of hard to make it and you know having to make it again by myself it's gonna be a bit harder but anyway i'm really enjoying working on this game and i really can't wait to show you more progress so that was all for today's update i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and in the next video i might show you the battle animations or i might show you the side characters i'm really not sure which one to choose first because both are actually incomplete but i'm not gonna take long with the updates so yeah i'm gonna pick one of those and i'm going to show you if you guys have enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel super special thanks to my patrons especially the dragon slayer tier which is directly supporting the development of this game without you this wouldn't be possible and yeah i will see you next time take care have a great day and bye <laughs>